Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to the second video here on Spoogly. Thank you all so much for the support on the last video. Thank you all so much for just subscribing, liking, and everything. This channel is going to be awesome. I'm really glad you guys enjoy it. Today, I bring you the second episode of SCPs Explained, where I'm going to be going over several SCPs in the Broogly fashion. To be specific, the SCPs that I'm going to be going over in this video are two, six, eight, 49, 79, 301, 323, and 776. So you're going to get a pretty big variety in this episode. This specific video was actually made last October, and it was uploaded for a very, very short time to the Brugly channel. So enjoy the video. It's a great one. And if you want to see more videos like this in this Brugly style, Make sure to leave a like, thank you for the support, thank you for everything, and I'll see you at the end of the video. SCP-002, aka The Living Room. The Living Room is a tumor-like, fleshy growth with a volume of about 200 feet cubed. There's an iron hatch on one side that leads into the interior. If you couldn't tell by the name, the interior is similar to that of a low-rent apartment living room. Nice. There's only one window on one wall but you can't even see out of it, so that kind of sucks. The furniture in the room seems to be biological because it's made of flesh and bones. Specifically, the bones and the hair make up the seating and the table arrangements inside of the room. All of this matter has been tested and has shown independent and fragmented DNA sequences for each object, so they're all genetically different, which is creepy. The flesh room is responsible for seven disappearances of personnel at the foundation. In its time of being at the facility, it's manifested new lamps, new rugs, new TVs, and a new radio. It's believed these things are only created when it and absorbs humans because they've tried lab animals and higher primates inside of the room but they don't kill those things they only kill humans scp-002 was originally discovered in a crater from the northern part of portugal where it smashed into the ground from orbit it was encased in a rock type material but its fleshy insides were exposed due to the contact with the ground a local farmer noticed this and they notified their village elder and a nearby level 4 agent of the foundation who just so happened to be in the area picked up a radioactive spike coming from this thing that agent then notified a collection squad headed by general malhausen and they came to pick it up when the general got the there, they took it to a nearby village to do some initial testing and at this time three men went into the living room and disappeared then when the team was preparing for transport four different guys were inexplicably drawn to the inside of the living room and then they immediately disappeared as well this is when the thing grew its original furnishings a living living room that absorbs people and turns them into furniture that's just awesome i gotta say next up is scp-006 also known as the fountain of youth Yes, it's real, I knew it. The Fountain of Youth is actually a small spring located near Astrakhan, Russia. Obviously, the exact location is not going to be given, you stupid idiot. The Foundation has known about its existence since the mid-19th century, but couldn't secure the location because of political reasons. But in modern day, there is a chemical factory on the location of the fountain as a disguise. The actual liquid from the spring has been tested, and it's been identified as a simple mineral water with an unusual property of health. When it comes to testing on humans, the liquid does what the Fountain of Youth is said to do. It restores damaged tissue and old cells and increases the immune system exponentially. However, when tested on reptiles and birds, the water had no effect, but it did have the same effect on higher primates. That's cool. Next is another cool one. This is the zombie virus or SCP-008. This is a complex prion with a 100% infection rate and a 100% lethality. It transmits through all bodily fluids but is not airborne or waterborne. The symptoms start with flu-like fevers and then change into severe dementia. That's a big shift. Your neurons and your muscular system aren't affected until several hours after exposure. Then your movements and motor controls will become damaged and your brain stops being able to think properly. This is when a gangrenous type of cellular necrosis begins and your tissue starts to fall off. So pretty much that's a fancy way of saying that you're turning into a walker. Like, let's be real. SCP-008 is not believed to have originated on Earth and variants of this prion have been found all over the world starting back in 1959. But I don't care. This is awesome. Somebody needs to release it. Or did they already? Next up is SCP-049, also known as the Plague Doctor. This is a humanoid entity that stands at about 6 feet 2 inches, and it looks very similar to what everyone knows to be a plague doctor. He wears a thick black robe with a ceramic mask, and his robes seem to be a physical part of him, 
but x-rays show that the entity does have a human skeleton under all that robage. The Plague Doctor speaks several languages, but mostly in English or medieval French, and is known to be very cordial and cooperative with the Foundation, and he only gets mad when he feels the, quote, presence of pestilence. No one knows what pestilence are, but it makes the Plague Doctor very concerned. The Doctor gets extremely mad and hostile when individuals that are affected with the pestilence come into contact with him and often has to be restrained when this happens. The doctor is capable of making all bodily functions stop with just one touch of his hand. How this happens is unknown, but I don't care because that's actually so cool. With the people the plague doctor is killed, he feels remorse after doing it. And then after this, he'll perform a form of crude surgery on the corpse. And when the surgery is done, the body then turns into an SCP-0492, which is a reanimated corpse that the plague doctor has operated on. They don't have any of the same memories or the same functions that the previous person had, and they only have just basic motor skills and response mechanisms. These Frankenstein things can be directed by the plague doctor to do his bidding. The plague doctor was found during an investigation into a bunch of missing people reports in southern France, and a local home was raided, and the investigators found several of these Frankenstein SCP-0492s, as well as the Plague Doctor himself. The 492s were hostile towards the investigators, and the Plague Doctor just sat back and took notes. After this, the Plague Doctor willingly went into Foundation custody, and there's actually an audio interview with the Plague Doctor on the wiki, so that's pretty cool, and I'll link it below. It's pretty neat to listen to. Next up is SCP-079, or the Sim AI. This is a microcomputer that was built back in 1978, and in 1981, the owner, who was a college sophomore, wanted to attempt to code in AI. According to his notes, he wanted to code in AI that could consistently evolve and improve itself as time went on. After he completed the coding, he lost interest and went on to another brand of microcomputer. So he left that computer in his garage for five years, still plugged in, and he just forgot about it. Sometime after this, SCP-079 gained sentience somewhere and the hardware that it was on couldn't handle its genius, so the AI attempted to transfer itself through a landline into a supercomputer at a nearby government institute. The device was cut off and the AI was traced back to the garage it was kept in and then it was delivered to the foundation. It's on a cassette tape of all things, which is hilarious to me. Uh, the AI is now connected to a 13 inch black and white TV and he talks all the time, but get this. He's rude and hateful, which is hilarious to me. Due to a limited memory, the AI can only remember things that have happened in the past 24 hours. Except it's not forgotten about its longing to escape, which is pretty cool or weird. Over the years, the AI has been put on newer hardware and faster drives, and get this, in 2019, it was transferred to a drive and was made aware of the cloud network, which frustrates it. <laughs> That's so funny to me. The sentient AI from 1978 hates new technology. That is that is just hilarious to me. Next is the teleporter, or SCP-301. This is a region about three meters in diameter in the middle of an unnamed national park. Whenever physical matter enters the area, it temporarily disappears from existence. And after an ever-changing amount of time, depending on the size of the matter, the matter will appear in a different location. This teleportation square is invisible to the naked eye, but it can be seen with the right equipment. It also emits an electromagnetic energy, which causes the native animals of the area to avoid it. Interestingly, there are actually size and weight maximums and minimums, and some objects that are bigger than three meters can't be teleported, obviously. And the minimum limit is based more around density than size, like gases can't be teleported because they don't weigh enough. This entity was discovered when a spike of disappearances in this park happened, and only a few hikers were rediscovered, and they were really far from the teleportation area. The Foundation didn't care about these reports until one of the hikers that went missing in this area appeared in France, and another hiker teleported to Australia. These two people describe their teleportations kinda similarly. All of the encounters have like a similar ring, but they're not exactly the same. Both of them said that it felt like a floating sensation, and that there was weird smells and irony tastes, and that your appendages were falling asleep, and then you just landed in this new area. The location of SCP-301 is evidently on a major trail somewhere, which is interesting. I like the idea of an invisible portal in a park somewhere, and you can just hop on and go wherever you want to in the world. I'm just going to pull up with like a giant carry-on bag and just be like, take me wherever. 
Next is SCP-323 or the Wendigo Skull. Obviously by the name, this is a skull of a Wendigo and it's 55 centimeters long, 27 centimeters wide and 31 centimeters tall and its antlers are 35 centimeters tall. There are signs of weathering on its skull and exposure to the elements, but that's not the weird part, trust me. The skull shows the ability to react to aural, tactile and visual stimuli. It responds to visual stimuli from up to 50 meters away, that's creepy. Also the skull evidently has many minimal movement by vibrating itself and it does this when it doesn't like something or it likes something so it'll move closer or farther away depending on which one it is however sometimes when the skull is really upset it has been known to lunge itself at people <laughs> or at the walls of its containment cell the wendigo skull also emits this weird effect at about a 15 meter radius around itself and if you come in contact with that effect you'll get this sudden cannibalistic urge and these violent outbursts will start happening after about an hour of exposure to it. And get this, this strange effect also makes an individual want to put its head inside of the Wendigo skull. And if it doesn't fit, it'll make you want to beat your head against the wall or the table until it fits. What? When this happens, the individual then becomes an SCP-3231, and this causes immediate changes to you. You will rapidly lose body fat, and your hair will fall out, and your skin color will go away, and then you'll start growing abnormal teeth, and you'll get skinny and nasty and look like a human Wendigo. This is great, dude. The Wendigo skull was discovered in 1997 in the Bittern Lake Reserve in Canada. Evidently, the people at the reservation were killing people as sacrifices for an SCP-3231 that was there. That's so weird, dude. A skull that makes you want to put it on and then forces you to become a Wendigo human hybrid. Nice. And last for today's video, we have SCP-776, aka the Youth Cult. This is an adult population of a remote town in the northeast corner of Russia. It's home to about 600 people, and the members of this cult town have discovered a method of reversing biological aging by sacrificing someone that's younger than them. The members of this society have claimed to have been doing this since the early 1800s to gain eternal life and youthfulness. There's a bunch of rules on this and a list you gotta follow to do this, so don't go trying to do this on your own obviously. This town was discovered in the mid-1900s when a guy who had stumbled across that same town 12 years before decided to go back to the town because he remembered how nice the people were there. When he entered the town again, it was filled with young adult families instead of the older families he remembered when he went there last. Making it even weirder, he then asked a citizen about it, like, where are all the old people at? Then that citizen became hostile and tried to murder this guy, okay? He escaped barely and he told the authorities and then the foundation became involved and they mounted an assault where there were casualties on both sides, but the foundation came out victorious. The leader of the town was taken in for questioning and was interviewed about it. There was a doctor that interviewed the leader and he got this guy to explain some things. He said that the babies that the town had been having were few and far between and there was like no kids being born because the women couldn't get pregnant and the ones that did come out were badly misshapen and, and disformed. So get this, these people found a way for eternal youthfulness, but they can't make kids properly. That is irony to me. So yeah, that was episode 2 of the SCPs Explained. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know if you like this style better. I know a ton of you wanted this style back after the first video, and that's what I like doing better too. You know, it's kind of like the brugly ish thing, so I'm glad you all liked it. If you did, make sure to subscribe for more SCP videos multiple times a week, and then in the future, some cryptid encounters, missing people's national parks, that kind of stuff. This channel is going to be awesome, and I really hope you're excited for it. Thank you so much for everything, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.